What's going on, everybody? This is Derek with Fat Planet LP, and welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. Now, I played this a long time ago on my channel, but that was back like when I first got started. I only had like maybe 100 views, if that, on it. Uh, I was really derpy back then. I mean, literally, is within my first month. So I figured, why not? Let's go ahead and bring it back, try again, now that we're in the thousands of subscribers area, and, you know, see if you guys like this. Now, I'm sure most of you have already seen this game before. It's by Greenheart Games. It's a husband and wife development team. Uh, I believe this is the first and only game they've made so far. I might be incorrect on that. They might be making other games um, right now. But I know this is their first, and I know that they worked on it together. And it is really, really, really awesome. There is other game dev tycoon type games out there, but this is by far the best. I love it. It takes a lot of strategy to do this. And there's a lot of derpy moments that can pop up too, so it's pretty cool. Uh, for those of you that don't understand the concept, you're basically a video game designer working out of your garage, as you can see in the background, and you have to actually build a game development company. Um, you eventually start getting upgraded into bigger offices, and then you start doing like big major stuff like MMOs, and have tons of employees, and, and everything else, so... Um, it, it's actually, it's, it's a really fun game, and I really enjoy it. So, um, try, hold on, I'm a kid sitting there trying to hand me a bottle. Go on, it's okay, honey. It's alright, I'll be with you in a second, okay? I'll be with you in a second, okay? Alright, so, anyway, sorry about that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start off the game right now, and we need to choose a company name. So, uh, I might as well introduce... I'm saying um and so and all this so many times. I Guys, I apologize. My wife is gone. I'm left with a three and a half year old. He was completely content watching a movie. And I guess he's getting a little bored of that. So I do apologize. So if I have to stop every once in a while, I'm not going to edit that kind of stuff out. Because you know me. I keep it real. Uh, and that's just the way it is. So let me introduce Pam and Dark, who is with me, who's going to join us during this LP. What's going on? Hey, guys. That sounded enthusiastic. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're like, hey guys. <laughs> I'm I'm also fighting a dog is acting like you're a three year old. Well, Ooh. yeah, yeah. You can lock a dog up in a kennel. I think it's illegal if I did that with Noah. So, um, what do you guys think a uh, a good company name would be? What do you think we should call it? Should we call it just Fat Planet mm. Entertainment? Like two uh, D plus one. Two D plus one. Yeah, an acronym. Uh, it's a clever way of saying 3D. It's a company I came up with a long time ago. This is why you don't make video games. All right. <laughs> 2D plus. Actually, there are several people in the game development community that like that name. Well, it it much. sounds it sounds good. We are in the 2D genre because the game does start out in the 1980s, so uh, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, the cool thing about this game, though, is it interacts with like every single type of, uh, of thing out there. So uh, instead of Nintendo, I think it's like Nintendo or something like that. Instead of the Commodore 64, it's the G64. So you're going to see a lot of names that look pretty similar, but uh, it's it's actually kind of different. So let me see. Let's go. Let's just call it Fat Planet. Fat Planet. Entertain. All right. You know what? Fine. We'll do 2D plus one. You know what? Just to keep, <laughs> just just to keep Baron happy. Two D plus one. Player name. We're gonna be the. I'm. Jesus. Oh, here we go. Dead Planet Crew. Excellent. Uh, we're all gonna be males, as symbolized by here. Uh, no offense to Pam. Oh my. <laughs> No, no. You, you okay with Pam. this, Pam? I guess I'll have to live with it. Sorry, Pam. It's 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 all right. All right. So let's go ahead and change our hair. I am in fact a redhead. So let's go ahead and change our attire here. And there we go. All right. I think that looks good. The Freddy Krueger sweater thing going on there with the with the red hair. I wish I could go like bald or something because that that would make more sense. I don't know. Somehow that just it makes me think bald with that shirt. I don't know. Interesting. Let, yeah, let's just hit continue. If it's going to let us hit continue. Right? Continue. Hope all right. Safe as well. Since you have played the game before, you can choose to use all previously gained hints in this new game. Would you like to import all previously gained Yes, I would. Absolutely. Um, 
Okay, let's do... Let's do this one. Yes, I'll overwrite that. Yes! Achievement unlocked! Support a young startup, buy the game. I've done that many, many times. All right. Now we need to click. All right. That, that's how the interaction is with this game. You actually, like, you, you click on it. You left click. And then it brings up this menu. And as you can see, this menu is not very developed right now. I mean, you literally have one option. And that's because we just started. Later on in the game, when you click this, you're going to have, like, freaking quadruple tons of options and branches. And it's just very complicated. All right, before development, uh, before development can begin, you have to decide what kind of game you want to create and give your game a name. You can also select which graphic technology your game should use, all right? Your options are initially limited, but once you have a bit of experience, you'll be able to unlock new options, as I explained. So let's come up with a game name. Uh, generally, to come up with a game name, I pick a topic. So we have unlocked to begin with, time travel, sci-fi, superheroes, and martial arts. Hmm. I will let you guys choose. You like sci-fi? Okay. Dark? Okay. Yeah. Sci-fi. Yeah. Now we have a genre. Uh, hmm. either RPG or strategy. Sci-fi RPG or a sci-fi strategy. Hmm. Or you could go with adventure, but... Usually I would think sci-fi would be a little bit more toward maybe um, the action, action and adventure type yeah. thing. An RPG wouldn't be too bad, actually. Sci-fi RPG. Let's do it. Let's do a sci-fi. There's several very successful ones already out there. Sci-fi RPG, I think, is going to be a good one. Now we got to pick our platform. Uh, we can do it on the G64, which has a market share of 56.1. Or we can do it on the PC, which only has a market share of 43.9. Now, this it game is... Yes, this game is historically active. So, all of us know that the Commodore 64 stopped production. It was too expensive. They couldn't keep up with the, the upgrading cheaper PCs. So, they eventually stopped production on these things. And look at your game matches. Plus, plus action. Plus, plus adventure. Plus, mm -hmm. plus simulation. Plus, plus strategy. None of which we pick. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, the, but, but the G64 but has unknown. The plus plus doesn't mean that we get any benefit or anything from that. We just know right. for a fact that these type of uh, titles work perfect on the PC. The PC is good for just about anything, but you have some things that work more well, say, on uh, one of the console. handheld devices that'll come out a little bit later, or a console, yeah. We're going to do the PC just because it's only $5,000 to operate on it versus the $20,000. we are kind of short on funds, so let's go ahead and do the PC. You confirm everything is right. We have not picked a game name for it yet, so what should we call our brand new sci-fi RPG? Oh, I'm really bad at naming things. See, and usually I am too, so I think we should call it... Um, let's call it... Fluffy... Meatballs, the sci-fi RPG, Fluffy Meatballs. I, myself, <laughs> if I seen Fluffy Meatballs sitting on a store shelf and I knew it was a sci-fi RPG, I would buy it in a heartbeat and I would definitely LP it. So Fluffy Meatballs, a sci-fi RPG. And now we get to choose our graphics. Well, we can do text-based or we can do 2D graphics version 1 for an extra $10,000. Oh, I'd go with 2D graphics. For an RPG, I would absolutely agree, yes. Let's go ahead and start development. He's going to start banging it out. Now, the little orange bubbles that pop up. Okay, well, it's going to go ahead and explain that, so I'll just I'll go ahead and read it here from here. Game development runs through three stages. At the beginning of each stage, you can decide what areas of the game you want to focus on. Picking the right focus for your game greatly increases the points you generate, which is true. Think about what areas are important for your game and decrease the focus on areas you think are less important. If you want to read a brief description of the different areas, please refer to the help menu, which we will not. All right. Now, as a guy develops the game or team later on, we're going to generate all these points. We'll, we'll generate research points, which is very important because that's how you de develop, you know, extra technologies and um, different genres get unlocked. Um, different engines can be built, and you do custom build these engines, which I think is really awesome. Um, technology is really important because technology and design is how we're going to make our games. 
Okay? It's half design, half technology. 25% divine, 75% technology. It depends on the type of game you're going to play. If you're going to do an action or an adventure, you want lots of design. You want world levels that are completely hey. awesome and stuff like that. But it's not going to take a lot of technology. So, like, uh, stuff with, um, say, artificial intelligence and stuff like that. If it's an action or a thriller type game like that, you don't need a lot of uh, interaction with, uh, with you know, the NPCs and stuff. So they don't need to have, like, this whole scientific thing behind them where they can interact with you. Now, I tend to kind of disagree with that because I do like my games fully immersive, but... Um, a, a, like a lot of linear games are full of design and not a lot of technology. Um, but I, I kind of disagree with that, but that's how the game goes along with it. So that's how we're going to do it. Okay. So knowing that this is an RPG and knowing that this is sci-fi, what are you thinking that we should probably put in the first development stage? Do you think we should go more for story and quests on the RPG, more gameplay, more engine? I go with more gameplay and story and quest and not engine. Yeah. And I'll be right back. My dog just got into the dog food and he's fighting over it with the other dog. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, typically, RPGs and simulations and stuff like that actually go really well when it comes to more of the technical side of things. So a stronger engine and stronger gameplay. But since it is an RPG, you do want story and quests. That is 100% true. So we're going to turn story and quests up. We're going to spend a little bit more time on that. Gameplay, we're definitely going to want up as well. So we want a lot of gameplay and story and quests in this thing. So we'll go max gameplay, uh, max story and quests, and mid-level engine. Now, this game has updated a couple times since I've last played this. When I first started this game, you literally kept the slider bars wherever you wanted them. Uh, say for an RPG, you knew exactly where to put the slider bars, and you never had to worry about adjusting these things ever again. Well, they fixed that kind of thing. So mm. it, a sci-fi RPG is going to be different than, say, um, you know, another type of RPG. And then you would have to adjust the sliders accordingly. So I am aware of that. Uh, for those that are watching that have played this game already, please try not to rage on me too much. Like I said, I'm really starting to get back into this. I like to play my games a little bit raw, so there's more of that real feeling behind it. I do try to teach as much as I can during gameplays, but I like to learn and develop and discover stuff just as much as everybody else, and I like to, to LP that kind of thing. Um, so let's try this and see how this works. Also, this is probably not going to be, and I'm going to admit to you guys right now, it's, I know this first episode seems like it's not a whole lot of entertaining, it's a lot of reading, a lot of learning and stuff like that, but I absolutely promise you, if this seems somewhat interesting to you, please try to stick around to at least the next couple episodes to see how this thing develops, to see how much more um, interactivity we're going to get with this thing, because the first stage is kind of a learning tutorial type stage and you get to the next office pretty easily so all right while developing your game you will generate game points which you can see bubbling up game points are divided into design points and technology points the more points you generate the better the game will be which is correct which i would hope would be correct it's in the tutorial <laughs> from time to time there will also be bug points generated those suck these points become less likely once you gain experience Bugs should be fixed before the game is released and increase development time and cost, which is true because once you've spent, you'll know because this guy will stop producing bubbles uh, and that's when you're going to want to end your game design. Otherwise, if you keep it going for too long, you're wasting a lot of money. Uh, you're wasting hype that gets uh, later on in the game. You get hype and advertisements and stuff. That'll start dropping significantly if you wait too long. Um, such as the next Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> a lot of hype for it, but if they keep us waiting for well too long, we're going to move on to some other stuff. So um, so that's basically what that's talking about. And this guy is, you know, this is his first game, so he's probably going to develop a lot of bugs throughout this. So here's stage two. Now we have dialogues, level design, and artificial intelligence. Well, in an RPG, you, you do want artificial intelligence. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Level design in an RPG, I would think, would be important. Now, mm -hmm. most of the time, one of these sliders is supposed to be at minimal, and the rest of these are either halfway or all the way up. Uh, and I'm not sure which one out of these three it's going to be. Dialogues, I think, is very important in an RPG, yeah. I would think, mm -hmm. since it is a role-playing game. 
Level design, let's go ahead and put that down just a little bit. Now, I disagree with this wholeheartedly. I think an RPG should be absolutely beautiful and immersive, and that's what I think level design would create. But uh, for the sake of this game, I'm thinking artificial intelligence and dialogues is going to be important on this. And we'll see how wrong we are. All right. During development, you can also select additional features for your game. Right now, you can only pick basic sounds, but your options will increase quickly. Selecting additional features makes the game generally better, but increases its cost. Which, you almost always want to make your game better, trust me. You also see the graphic type you selected when you define the game. This is just to remind you of your choice. You cannot change the type of graphics mid-game. Absolutely not. Can't do that. Alright, so these are what we have here. Sounds we can actually take on and off. We can add additional sounds if we want, which we do absolutely want sound. We don't want like that. Mm -hmm. Basic sounds are kind of like that. Boop, boop, da -da -da, boop, boop, you know, stuff like that. You know, later on, it's going to be that bone crushing cinematic, you know, surround sound bomb exploding type thing, uh, which we'd have to upgrade to. But right now, it's just like the beeps and the blips and, you know, the, the stuff you usually hear from like your, uh, your motherboard speaker, uh, if you should happen to have one, which you should, because it's important, because it beeps. All right. So, world design, graphic, and sound. Hmm. Well, you've only got basic sound, so I wouldn't worry about the sound too much. I'd work more on world design and graphics. Correct. Uh, world design, I think, would be very important for an RPG. Graphics, uh, it's a little important, but world design, I think, is going to be a lot better. So, let's try this out. Let's see how this goes. He's scratching his head. Look at that. Money's going away and ticking down. And There we go. There we go. Lot, lots of bugs there, buddy. All right, now we are finished. The development of your first game is now complete. You can press the finish button to publish your game, but you should only do that once you fix the majority of the bugs. I don't care how desperate straight you are uh, with your cash flow, even if it's in the negative, you want to get them bugs out because you're not going to do yourself any good if you put out a crappy game because you will not get nothing out of it, okay? Not enough to save you, anyway. And, like I said, releasing a game without fixing bugs can severely affect your ratings, so... But we're gonna let him do... He'll also generate additional points. He'll polish the game up a little bit, too. Now, once the bugs are fixed, I generally let this sit for about a minute or two. See how he's still banging bubbles out? Now he's done. After a couple seconds go by and no more bubbles come out, you want to go ahead and finish it. So our game is now finished. While developing games, you gain experience and improve your skills. When development is completed, you will be presented with a summary of that experience. All right, there we go. We got bonus. Ah, new topic and new combo, so we bonused that. We didn't get an excellent combo, so somehow sci-fi RPG isn't the best combo, I guess. Doesn't mean it's terrible, just means it's not the best. So we kind of got gained a little bit on some levels. We worked on uh, all of our stuff. Now, the more you actually put into, say, level design and artificial intelligence, the more you're going to level up in that. And this is for each individual person, but we're only focused on one person right now, since it's just us. Now, we can either release this game or trash the game. And you're probably wondering, why would you want to trash the game? Well, once we create a second game, it's going to let us know if we broke any records. The main thing you want to focus on is each game you put out, you want to try to get these higher each time. Now, that's not always going to happen, and it's not always going to signify a bad game, but it is going to kind of clue into you, yeah, I did better this game, so it should do better on the market. But it just really depends on what's hot on the market then, which you'll discover later on in the game. Uh, what's really hot right now? Is sci-fi really hot? Is odd combos really hot? You know, um such as like a horse RPG or something like that. Like who in their right mind would want to play something like that? a horse RPG? Like you get to be a horse. I, you know, I don't know. Now that would be a horse simulator. It could be a horse simulator. Yeah. But that is not that bad. You know, I mean, I think it's kind of a bad combo. A horse. Simulator. Well, we got goat simulators. So, I mean, come on and they look how popular that coming. is. Now, most people would not play a goat simulator. If I seen that like five years ago, before I got introduced to Steam and all that, and I seen goat simulator, I'd be like, oh, hell no, I'm not playing that. That's goofy. Like, that just seems stupid. Well, then a trend starts. They made this game out. They put a lot of hype out. It was all a big joke to begin with, but the people really wanted it. So then it got produced, and now people are buying it up like crazy and streaming it and doing LPs on it. It created a hype. 
and that happens in this game as well, which I think is really cool that that they put that immersion into this. So let's go ahead and well, release at, the game. Look at Bear Simulator coming up now. Oh, I haven't even looked you at know. it. I prob I probably won't. I probably won't. I'm happy with my goat. I don't need no bears. Oh, but you get to play as a bear. Ooh, good judgment. Create a game with a good topic and genre combination. All right, so we did good with that. All right, so our game is complete and is going to be handed off to publishing. So let's see how we did. We can cross our fingers. The first reviews for our newly released game, Fluffy Meatballs, came in. Oh, oh. That's not that good. Oh, okay. Generally, in the first game you produce, you want to see sevens. You're, you're not going to get much higher than a seven, honestly. I mean, you might. You might get into the eight. But we're not using our own engine. You know, we're using an older engine, you know. So the newer engines tend to have uh, better reviews just because it's something brand new. It's, it's something cool. It's hot. It's fresh off the press, you know. So this isn't too this bad for bad a first game. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad for a very first game. Their focus on world design served this game very well. So that was a wise choice. World design for the RPG. So let's see what kind of sales we're going to get. Right, we can generate a game report, which is going to be kind of important. And what that's going to do... Okay, 2D plus one, a newcomer in the game industry has just released their first game, Fluffy Meatballs. The game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, 2D plus one are sure to gain fans quickly. Well, this should be is sure, but who knows. <clears throat> now, well, let's generate a game report. Now, what is that going to do for us? Well, that is going to... He's going to do some research into that, and that's how we get our hints later on. What served well? Um, what did we do good in that game? What combos work good? Uh, was it a smart idea to put a lot of, uh, to lessen the sound in that game? Was it a smart idea to raise the graphics? Stuff like that. Now, it's not going to research everything. You have a chance to unlock, um, a certain hint from that that we, we can use in the RPGs later on. So we get a little bit more smart with it. If we raise the graphics and we weren't really supposed to because it wasn't really that important and he discovers that, we'll know that from now on not to put a lot of graphics in an RPG. And that'll save us a lot of time and money in the future. But there's only a chance he'll discover stuff like that. So, all right, we made it number 67 in the charts. Um, now that we received, okay, games on market. So now we're going to get sales for every week. We started generating fans, which is important because fans are going to buy your games because they love you. They're always going to buy your games, no matter what. Now, you can lose fans if you put out a crappy game, and those are guaranteed lost sales that you have. So 26 people in the future is going to buy our game for sure. But that's not a lot of fans uh, as a guarantee because we just sold 3.4 thousand uh, in, uh, in the first week. <laughs> so, you know, that 26 fans ain't really doing us much. But it's good to have them. Now, he's also going to generate research points while he does this report, which is really good to do. Because you want research points, because that's how we level up. Alright, sci-fi and RPG is a great combination. Sound seems to not be very important for this type of game. There you go. So now we know, and that's going to let us know in the future, whenever we, type, we do this type of game, we can look at the report, and we'll know not to put a lot of emphasis in the sound. Now, I disagree with that. I think an RPG with good sound effects, good dialogue, you know, an immersive, uh, you go in a cave and hear the cave sounds and the echoes. I think that's really, really important. But again, this is a game about making games. So they try to put as much logic into it as possible. But according to this, sound's not going to be very important for an RPG. So we know that in the future. So we have to kind of retrain ourselves on what we know to be true per se. And now they're telling us more about game reports. It's a great way to gain more research points. Blah, blah, blah. Pays off to generate. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I can't wait till we move on to like episode two and episode three uh, of G Game Dev Tycoon because we're going to get a lot more goofy. We're going to get a lot more derpy. Um, there's just a lot of these pop-ups that happen. Um, and you don't really get the chance to make like really awesome goofy titles uh in the beginning so i promise you guys stick with me this is going to get a lot more goofy and a lot more derpy uh as time goes on i can guarantee you this because i had a blast with my first playthrough 
Uh, we hit an important milestone, 10,000 units. That's great. That's going to be absolutely nothing later on, I'm telling you. You hit 10,000 in the first week, you're going to be just feeling sick to your stomach once we get to the new office. So as that's going, we can either research, we can develop a new game, or we can look at our game history. Now, game history is going to show us a list of all the games, just as it's shown here, which is important because you don't want to create too many games of the same genre in a row. We definitely don't want to do another sci-fi RPG. If we can help it, we probably don't want to do uh, another RPG, period. Um, now, if a two or three games have been released, it might be safe to go ahead and go into the RPG genre again. Uh, if six or seven games have been released by us, then we could probably do another sci-fi RPG. I generally don't do those until I research uh, the sequels ability, and then you can make a sequel to the game. So if it was really like the first time, you're going to get a lot of hype for the sequel. But again, these are things later on, and I'm just kind of running off in the mouth. So let's go ahead and do some research so we can unlock some new stuff. Point, you mm -hmm. get to the point eventually where you've used every combination, so you mm -hmm. have to reuse combos. And that's when you look at your game history, and you'll go back and, you know... Try not to do the last three or four that you've done in a combination. Um, try to develop games with different topic and genre combinations. Yep, see. Now, we have to wait till we get 50 research points before we can make our custom game engine. Generally, once you make a custom game engine, if you do a good game combination, um, that will usually get you enough money. And that would usually trigger the ability to go to the next office. Not always. But once we reach this point here, I think we'll be able to move on to the next office. So instead, let's not spend any topic research. We're not going to get a new topic. we got three more fresh topics we can work with, and that's ten points. And we're almost already halfway to a new engine, so let's not waste that. Let's go straight into developing a new game. Let's pick a new topic. Hmm. Superheroes? <laughs> Superhero? Okay. Now, superheroes, probably not a good thing to do an RPG superhero. You could probably do a simulation, which would, would work out actually pretty well. I don't think a strategy is going to do very good. An adventure, eh, I think a superhero adventure might be pretty cool, or we can do action. Now, my picks is either simulation or action. You can simulate being a superhero, or you can just have a superhero action game. Action. I think action action all right and we're definitely going to put that back on the C pc because we got a plus two for action we know action does pretty decent all right so what are we going to call the superhero action game on the pc underpants man i don't know how about how about flatulence man I spell flatulence right? I think I did, right? Or is that an E? No, that's an A, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Flatulence man. So? Flatulence man! How dare you! Unhand that purse! <laughs> there we go. I think that works. Flatulence man! We want 2D graphics. Absolutely. Already generating a bug. Good job, dude. Doing good. Alright, we're getting a little bit more money. We're about 5,000 over from where we, we kind of started, so that's that's decent. Uh, action, I don't think, is going to need a good engine. That That's just not really... It's gameplay is going to be the main thing. Yeah, gameplay is going to be... as the superhero. ...the main thing. We'll do a little bit of engine. Uh, do a little bit on the story and the quest, but we're going to really focus on gameplay on this one now. Engine's actually not really important at all. Fluffy Meatballs is now off the market. It sold 12,669 copies, generating 88,000 in sales. Okay, I can already tell we're doing better on this one. Look at that. Recent market study suggests that the Gavador G64 is steadily outselling competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. For now. Oh, Experts no. say this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. You, th <laughs> you think so? All right. No, no. Uh... <laughs> well, we, we kind of know a little bit better than that. But back then, they really they really thought that uh, the Commodore was going to do really good. 
While generating game reports, you start to gain insights into the development process and learn about what works well and what doesn't work so well, as I explained. These insights are shown as hints on the development screen, unless you've turned this option off. No, I have not. Hints range from plus plus to minus minus and indicate how important an area is for this type of game. When hints have a question mark at the end, it means that you have insights from a game in the same genre, but you are not sure yet whether this holds true for this particular genre combination. And I explained that to you a little bit earlier, that just because um, engine is not so important on an action game for superheroes, it might be important for, say, a sci-fi action. Uh, it, it generally isn't, but you never know. That kind of genre could be different, so... All right, so Flatulence Man, superhero action. Uh, should we focus on dialogue? Mm, uh, I'd say put that at half, because you still need witty banter. Okay. Um, level design. Yeah, I think you're going to need that a little higher. I think yeah. level design should go way up. Artificial yeah. intelligence on an action, you're not going to need much. Most action games are kind of linear, so... Not, yeah. uh, not true all the time, but most are. So we're going to keep artificial intelligence down, and we're going to do lots of level design. Dialogues, just a little bit. All right, stage three. We got world design, graphic, and sound. That almost looks right. No. Uh... I think graphic design higher. I than think world, world design and graphic need to swap. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, see, negative, world design, question mark. Yeah. We'll put world design down. Again, it's kind of linear. So let's go high graphics and a little bit high sound for action. Because that's important. You want them explosions to look realistic and you want them to sound good too. Probably go a little higher on that. Actually, you know what? It's action. Let's do a lot of sound. Yeah, but you're okay. still on basic sounds, too. Yeah, you're right. But this is going in the concept of developing the experience bubbles for design and technology as well. So. We want that. We want that to be like hardcore, high definition, like not you know. That's important. All right, let's polish it up a little bit, a little bit more in technology. Oh. What's this? According to rumors, a Japanese com uh, company, Nevento, hmm, that sounds familiar, is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Kinky King. <laughs> King. Nevento is known for the widely successful arcade game, Dinky King. Yeah, I remember Dinky King. Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager oh, to man. see what Nevento will deliver. Yeah, I'm kind of doubtful, man. I don't know about them, uh, them home systems. There we go. Let's go ahead and finish that. I think that's good. Yay! New records on both. New topic, new combo bonus, which is great. Uh, and that just increases the experience that we're going to gain from this. Let's go ahead and click it so that'll go through quick. All right. I think maybe one more good game and we'll, we'll level up. We're going to release it. I think it did really well. I think we're going to do good at this. We're not going to trash it because... Uh, we don't have a lot of money we can waste here. The only reason you want to trash a game is if, uh, say, you're only making a game to gain experience for your people a little bit faster. Um, there is, uh, like, research and studying and stuff like that later on where you can have them read a book or teach a class or something. They'll gain more experience in a certain uh, genre, like on engines or something. Uh, and then even later on in the game, you can actually uh, put somebody as an expert. So they're the person that works on your engines. Uh, there's a person that works on your graphics. And those are generally for the bigger, like, medium and large base games, AAA games and stuff like that, which we'll get into, which is very exciting. That's where the real exciting stuff comes up. It's not just sitting in the garage clicking buttons, guys, I promise. First reviews came in. Let's cross our fingers. Flatulence Man, how did you do? Well, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Again, we don't have our own engine. We're working off an old used engine right now. So this is not bad. See? We well, did better. Better than the last one. We did better. So not, not, not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and generate a game report for Flatulence Man. 
as our sales are coming in. All right, we're ranked 51. That's better than 60-something. Yeah. Post-analysis. All right. Superheroes and action is a great combination. All right, good job. Dialogue seems to not at all... Oh, to oh, be not at all I important. I told you. Not at really? all important. Nobody likes the witty banter. Well, I we took the di you. We did. We lowered the dialogues. We did. But since it's not at all important, we should have lowered that thing absolutely to the ground. We might have yeah, got a darn. little bit better of a review, but not bad. Woody, Woody Banner, they could care less about. <laughs> uh, so again, sad. I love the Woody Banner. We'll have to develop a new game to get a little bit more research, but we're running a little bit long on this episode. I'm, I'm encouraging you guys, if you're kind of on the fence about this, at least give it to episode two to see if you're going to uh, continue watching the series. I hope you do. I love this game. It's great. And I know you guys are going to have fun with it. We all are. And it's going to get a lot better. I can promise you. Once all these boxes and stuff start popping up and we actually get into the deepness of this game, I really think you're going to enjoy it. All right. So at least give it to episode two. That's my request. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And hopefully I will see you on episode two. Till then, you guys take care. See ya.